Yeah, the World Bank hosted its first Global Digital Summit on Monday, where global governments and private sector officials, thought leaders and others converge to explore the opportunities and challenges surrounding the shared mission of accelerating digital for development. Let's take a listen to excerpts from the opening session featuring a conversation with the World Bank Group President, Ajay Banga. How do you prioritize digital at a time when, as you pointed out in a session that we did together in Davos a few months ago, there are still 600 million people without electricity in, in Africa alone? Yeah, so, so yes, 600 million people in Africa alone do not have power, not at all. I mean, when you fly over the continent, you will see dark patches, not because there aren't people, it's because they're living the way their ancestors used to live. And I think that's absolutely unacceptable. And it's an issue of human rights. Uh, I consider it to be as fundamental a human right as the right to breathe. And so we have to give them access to electricity. But remember that at the same time, one third of the people in the world don't have access to the internet. And the one third of the people in the world are two plus billion. And here it's 600 million, some overlap, obviously, because if you don't have power, there's no way to access Hans's right. capabilities. But if you, even if you have power, clearly there's a billion and a half people who still don't have access to the internet. And of course that gets exacerbated when you start talking gender. So, and age. So this gets a little crazier and Hans is the expert on these kinds of numbers. But to me, therefore, there's no trade-off. The reality is we have to get those 600 million people connected to electricity. The bank has made a commitment to reach 100 million by 2030. We're in the process of seeking to expand that ambition to another 100 million. If we can do that with renewable energy, by the way, we've tried it out in Rwanda and Tanzania. We know it can work. Now we have to generate not just money from IDA, which is a huge part of our bank, but also from uh, governments themselves, and most importantly, from the private sector. It's kind of a one-third, one-third, one-third participation in this effort. I think of that as being the base load for building digital on. Meanwhile, there's the other billion and a half of people who have access to electricity, don't have digital, we have work to do with them too. And then there's the others who do have access to the internet, but it's not being fully used and exploited for the capabilities that it is possible to do. So there's different shades of work to be done with different target audiences. Yeah. Hans, let me bring you into this conversation. You have been making great strides in bridging the digital divide um, at home through your work with Verizon and internationally through your work with Edison uh, Alliance. What works? What works in, in helping bridge the digital divide? Um, first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm applauding you. I understand all the challenges you have. I, I, of course, for many reasons, has said that digital inclusion is extremely important. I think the 21st uh, century's infrastructure is mobility broader than cloud. And I don't think it should matter where you're born, where you come from, and who you are, that you should be part of our society. And today, to be part of our society, you actually need to be digitally included. Uh, I've been fighting for goal 18 uh, for the SDGs uh, for a long time. I gave it up, as many know, it's only 17. Uh, my work, uh, both uh, as Verizon, but also globally, has always been trying to see that we find it the opportunities to take down the barriers because there are very different barriers in different worlds. And let me give you some numbers. So today, uh, roughly 5.3 billion people are connected to the internet. 2.6 billion are not connected. Of the 2.6 billion, I would say 85, 90% of actually covered by broadband, some kind of broadband. And people look at me, that cannot be true. It's actually true. And then you start dividing where are the barriers and the barriers are three. Accessibility to technology, yes, there are probably a half a billion people or 400 million that actually outside the, the telecom grid. Affordability is one of the biggest barriers of all, meaning afforded device, afforded service plan, uh, uh, that, that's uh, sometimes uh, a staggering challenge. And finally, uh, the usability, having application that is actually supporting the society, meaning uh, education, digital education, digital healthcare, financial inclusion, being part of the societal uh, opportunities that the government uh, gives you and being able to work. And it's different in every country. I mean, as we heard, 
electricity could be in one, in one country, another country could be, it's too expensive, there are no subsidized plans. Um, I would say to 90, 95% all infrastructure in the world is, is done by private money. Uh, the biggest challenge has actually been affordability and usability. Then you understand the challenge of it. It's a multifaceted challenge. There is not one organization, one country, one NGO, one private company can do it because ultimately think about those three, ex uh, accessibility, affordability, usability. It goes from a sort of grading from private sector, then you meet each other on affordability and then usability, I would say 95% of the countries in the world, healthcare, education, uh, financial inclusion, all done by the big institutions and governments.